Welcome to the VMware Integrated OpenStack product demonstration. In this video, we will get an overview of the autoscaling component of the OpenStack Heat Orchestration Service. In this demonstration environment, we already created our load balancer and assigned a virtual IP address. We just have to deploy an autoscaling group that will dynamically attach web servers to the load balancer depending on the thresholds we define. We start at the Horizon UI and expand Compute and click on Instances. Note that the only instance that exists here is an administrative jump host that the operations team can use to manage the application infrastructure. We try to access the load balancer virtual IP address in a web browser and verify that there is no web content being served to application users. Before we deploy any instances, let us take a look at the heat template YAML files that will be used to build the infrastructure. We start with autoscaling-demo.yaml. If you viewed our VMware integrated OpenStack heat video, some of this syntax will be familiar. The template file starts by defining the parameters that will serve as user inputs to the orchestration engine. It is possible to provide default values as seen here. The resources section lists the items that the template will instruct the orchestration engine to create. In this template, we first create an autoscaling group that consists of at least one, or at most three, instances defined by the web-node-demo.yaml file. The resource that we define here utilizes another template file named web-node-demo.yaml, and we make use of the parameters that we have defined above. Next, we define a scaling policy that will direct the orchestration service in adding more resources to our application infrastructure. In this example, the scaling adjustment is one new instance per threshold violation. Moving forward, we have an alarm defined based on a salometer threshold. The threshold we defined here is average CPU utilization over 5%. If the average utilization is greater than 5% for 60 seconds or more, the alarm will be triggered and the scaling policy will be followed to add a new web server to the load balancer pool. Let us switch to the web-node-demo.yaml file to see the resources that will be deployed by the autoscaling group. Here, we have an optional server ID resource of type OS heat random string. This resource will help indicate a random string for the web server's hostname. Next is the OS Nova server resource, which will deploy an instance with a flavor, image, and other options specified. Note the user data section, which will use the cloud config capability to customize the instance. In this example, we will create a sample homepage for our web server. We will use Python's simple HTTP server module to display our website on port 80. Finally, the instance customization creates a bash script for generating load on the instance. The final resource is of type OS Neutron Pool Member. This resource helps add our new instance to the load balancer pool that was created during the preparation of this environment. If you would like to learn more about load balancers in OpenStack, you can take a look at the Load Balancing as a Service video from this series. We then navigate back to the command line. Here, we use the OpenStack Heat client to initiate the autoscaling orchestration template. We can see here a Create in Progress status. We head back to the Horizon GUI to track the deployment of the various resources. Click on the Demo Autoscaling stack, which consists of Autoscaling Group, Autoscaling Policy, and Sealometer Alarm. The green color indicates successful completion. If there were any errors, we would have seen a red color on one or more of the stack components, along with a message telling us the error details. Let us now verify that our first instance in the autoscaling group was created successfully. Click on Compute, and then Instances. Notice we have a new instance with a random hostname. We go back to the browser tab that has the load balancer IP address. Refresh the page and check the web content that we defined in our instance. Later, when we have more than one instance in the autoscaling group, we will be able to differentiate by the different hostname and IP address on the home page. We will now generate some CPU load on the autoscaling group's first instance. From our jump host in the lower left panel of the terminal window, we log into the web server created by the orchestrator. In the top terminal panel, we verify the state of the sealometer alarm created for our autoscaling group with the sealometer alarm list command. Since the instance was just deployed, 
we see an insufficient data statement at this point. Back in the lower left terminal panel, we will use the dd command to generate some load on the CPUs. A few more of those processes get started, and we then use the top command to verify that the CPU usage has increased. Note that CPU usage has increased to 23%. We will also use the Apache Bench tool in the lower right terminal pane to start the requests against our web server. Next, we will check our alarm list in the top terminal pane again. It does not show any change. So, we will let the CPU load generators run for a bit and then check again. We will check the alarm list again in a few minutes. The CPU usage alarm now shows an alarm state, which means it will follow the autoscaling policy and deploy an additional web server. Using the Nova list command, we show that a new instance has been deployed. We go back to the load balancer virtual IP in the web browser and reload the page a few times. Notice that the host name and IP address listed on the home page changes to show the different web servers in the load balancer pool. We can now confirm successful execution of the heat autoscaling policy and the creation of our instances. This concludes the VMware Integrated OpenStack product demonstration. Thank you.